I know who you are. There's a reason the man in the red shirt, Harry Bostick, looked familiar to Sergeant Hilden Sessom. This was the second time the Oxford, Mississippi police officer had arrested Bostick for driving drunk. You been drinking today? There was an open bottle of wine in the front seat with him. There was an open bottle of champagne on the front seat with him. He had a uh, large cup that was full of red wine. Police found he was driving at twice the legal limit of alcohol. This was Bostick's third drunk driving arrest in a year. You know you're not supposed to be driving. Bostick pled guilty to the felony charge, was sentenced to a year of house arrest and to four years in an alcohol abuse program. Right before I put the cuffs on him, he said, don't do this to me. And my comment to that usually is, you did it to yourself. A year after that arrest, Harry Bostick applied for a pardon from Governor Haley Barber. This former IRS investigator had high-profile friends write letters asking the governor to pardon Bostick. Friends wrote that Bostick's life fell into a destructive course after the tragic death of his teenage son in a house fire and a divorce from his wife. A federal prosecutor wrote, Harry no longer drinks alcohol and can now be a positive factor in many lives. Another friend wrote, Bostick had turned his life around. The Mississippi Parole Board, in a 3-2 to two vote, recommended Bostick get a pardon. Governor Barber agreed. The power of pardon in the state is to give people a second chance who have repented, been rehabilitated, and redeemed themselves. Charity was quite the artist. This was a gift she gave yeah, to you. And this is how she signed it. She signed it with her handprint. Uh -huh. But don't tell Linda Smith that Harry Bostick has been rehabilitated. Just seven days after he was recommended for a pardon, Smith's 18-year-old daughter, Charity, was killed along this highway in a violent car crash. The driver of the car was Harry Bostick. She should still be here with me. She should still be here with me. This should not have happened. The sun had just set on an October night and Charity was driving down this gravel road. She had come here to this neighborhood to pick up her sister and take her to dinner. They were excited. They hadn't seen each other in quite some time. Mississippi authorities say in the meantime, Harry Bostick was driving this way, back toward Oxford. Driving, they say, under the influence again. Charity pulled out into the highway to make a left-hand turn. Bostick slammed right into the side of her. Charity was killed. Her sister survived. Bostick was sent to a jail in Oxford for violating his previous DUI sentence, while prosecutors tried to figure out what to charge him with. Harry Bostick's attorney never returned our repeated calls. We tried to find Bostick at his home. He didn't answer, and we called him. Get a voicemail. But while Bostick waited in jail, Haley Barber pardoned him. Bostick was free. How did that happen? It turns out the governor's office and parole board never did a last-minute check of Bostick's record. Both say they had no idea Bostick had been arrested a fourth time for drunk driving. A baffling stroke of luck for Harry Bostick. And Linda Smith worries her daughter has been forgotten in all of this. Do you feel like they didn't, they didn't know about Charity? They, they, they didn't know what had happened to her? Surely they didn't know about her. Why would they do it if they knew about her? She is a person. She wasn't just some name on a piece of paper. She was a person. Charity Smith was saving money to go to college, dreaming of getting a business degree, a young girl with big dreams, and an artist's heart. This, this is, is the one that kind of stands out to me. Yeah, this one, life is short. Mourned by a mother with a broken heart. Ed, has anyone from Barber's office explained how they would grant a pardon to somebody who was in jail for killing somebody else? I mean, did they just not even know? They just didn't know that? No, the governor's, uh, in a statement we got from the governor, uh, spokesperson late today, they said that uh, the governor was unaware of, of what had been going on. We tried uh, to has the find governor said he's sorry? Has anyone, in in the has anyone in the office said they're sorry? Has anyone called up that grieving mother who can't even speak? because she's, she's so heartbroken? Has anyone apologized to her? Oh, no, that she hasn't gotten any, any kind of calls like that, any kind of information, as, as, we, as you heard her say, and she told us she kind of feels like her daughter's been forgotten uh, in, in all of this. So I just, I, I, I just I want to understand this. He had, he had fancy friends or influential friends write him letters saying he should be pardoned, and then as he's uh, awaiting that pardon and finally gets that pardon from the governor, he kills her daughter.
he kills this woman's daughter in another drunk driving incident. Right, and just to be clear, the, the circumstances of, as to who's at fault in that accident is still under investigation, but at the end of the day, it won't really matter because it sounds like the Mississippi authorities are convinced that he was driving under, under the influence, so all of that kind of stands. Uh, but uh, exactly, all of this, he was sitting in jail awaiting to what was going to happen with that charge uh, when all of this came down. And that's where we're at now. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's just incredible. Ed Lavendero, again, we, we keep re reaching out to Haley Barber uh, to, to explain this. I mean, there, there's a lot of questions he, he needs explaining and uh, needs some answers to, and, and uh, he won't appear on the show. So if anybody else gets him on their show, you should ask him about this, uh, this poor dead girl and her, and her grieving mother and if he feels bad about it and maybe if he'd apologize to her.